You're watching The Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, new treatment options for people that are suffering with sleep apnea, and especially for those people that cannot tolerate or can't use their CPAP machine to go to sleep. Uh, according to my first guest, about approximately 60% of the people that get a CPAP that is known to be very effective for sleep apnea, they can't wear it. So it doesn't work. So now with these new uh, custom-made dental appliances, people are back to sleep. They're not waking up you know, 10, 20, 30 times an hour. And the results he's getting, he says, are amazing. Uh, with us, we have an expert on this topic. We're also talking about chronic snoring. He said before we came on that uh, helping the, the people with the loud snoring those are the easiest. Uh, with us, we have Dr. Shah. Dr. Shah, welcome to the program. Thank you, thank you. For people that don't know your practice, I guess this is all you do. You don't do regular dental procedures. You just deal with sleep. That's correct. Is that right? That's correct. So who, who's coming in for this? Who's a typical patient? Well, Randy, you know, a lot of people believe that, uh, you know, we probably treat mostly oversized, uh, overweight men. Um, but in reality, you know, our patient base is uh, roughly 50% men, 50% women, um, and, uh, you know, s some who are overweight, but a lot of uh, average weight, uh, normal weight uh, patients. So those that really who are fatigued, who are tired, they want to live, uh, have a better quality life, they want to have more energy, they want to feel like they're alive. Um, a lot of them are referred by their physicians uh, because they've been diagnosed with sleep apnea, meaning they actually stop breathing. Um, sometimes, you know, 5, 15, 30 times every hour during the night. Um, and so they're just not getting enough oxygen. Uh, some of them may be snoring excessively. Uh, they're having trouble sleeping with their, with their bed partner or they're having trouble going on trips with friends and family because they can't stay in the same, uh, you know, hotel room um, because they, they make so much noise when they sleep. So we see uh, a, a wide range of patients uh, with, any of these, with any of these conditions. Now, we, we should mention, now, medical insurance... Yeah. Covers, covers this yeah. procedure. Is that right? Yeah. And even <clears throat> Medicare, you take Medicare. That's correct. We take Medicare that's set as well. Up for this. Yeah. And we take most medical insurances. Actually, I think that's one of the the really unique um, aspects of this of this treatment, as well as of my practice, is that we accept medical insurances. And it, it's really not easy, Randy. I've been doing this uh, for about six or seven years now, full time, just exclusively treating uh, sleep apnea and snoring, and it. it you know, we're still struggling with insurance companies, but guess what, we've, we've got a lot of them. A lot of them that we're contracted with that have asked us to contract with them. And so it becomes a lot easier for people to get the care that they need so they can sleep better and live better and, and, and not snore as well. So. Now, you know, we talked at the, uh, you know, off camera at the break that many offices, dental offices that are doing this, are collecting the money in advance yeah. from out of pocket with the patients yeah. because they're not set up for medical insurance like you are. Correct. Because it may take six months or 12 months to even get paid. Yeah. Absolutely right. So yeah. you're set up for that. We're absolutely set up for that. And, and the important thing that you know I wanted to emphasize in my practice was that I didn't want to hold off on anybody's care because of what the insurance might dictate. Okay, so what we do is, is, is we check everything up front, we check all the benefits, we give the patient an estimate of, of, of what their coverage will be, um, but then we start them on the treatment, right? So that way they can get the care they receive, they can see a benefit right away, can change their life, give them more energy, they can sleep better, they can function better, right? Um, and, and then we'll, we'll take care of the insurance part as we go through the treatment, and it works out great. Okay, so these people, just so I understand this correctly, they think they're sleeping, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Maybe they're told by their partner that they're loud, they're snoring or gagging or whatever, yeah. but they're not really sleeping. Correct. Yeah, it's it's really the. So help me understand that part. Yeah, you know, it's really the quality of sleep, right? So, let me tell you this: if if you're sleeping in a, you might not even wake up in the middle of the night if you're not breathing. Okay, it's just that your your body though is coming out of deeper stages of sleep, and so you're you're it's called arousals. You're having these arousals when you're when you're sleeping, but you're not fully awakening. So when you have these arousals, you're actually not getting the deep sleep that you should be, that you should be getting to, to really uh, refresh yourself, replenish your body, rejuvenate. So how many times do they wake up? Well, it, you know, it, it can go as, you know, uh, up to 30, 40, 50 times an hour, even more. We've treated patients that wake up almost 100 times every hour throughout the night, eight hours throughout the night. Can you believe that? And they're exhausted. I had one, one patient, a female, she was um, approximately 50 years old. She was waking up 96 times every hour. Okay, throughout the night, she could not tolerate the CPAP machine, Randy. So it was it was really uh, detrimental to her, to her her well being as well as her her health as well. Well, 
her doctor finally gave in and referred, uh, referred her to our office for an oral device, um, and it changed her life. We, we took her, we were able to take her from, from not breathing 100 times, almost 100 times an hour, all the way down to about three times an hour, Randy. Now, five and, and below is actually considered normal, okay? okay. So, so five and above is actually when you get diagnosed with sleep apnea. So we brought her from extremely, extremely severe sleep apnea, her oxygen levels dropping throughout the night, to only breathing, only stopping breathing about three times. So it was fantastic, it changed her life. If you actually talk to her today, her facial expression, Randy, is completely different. So they wake up tired. Yeah, absolutely. Now, she, in her case specifically, she was waking up exhausted. She didn't have the energy to even go on walks, for example. Um, she had a, a garden, which she was very proud of, but she wasn't able to maintain it, you know, to the extent that, we, that she'd like to. Um, and now all of a sudden, um, her fatigue is gone. She has more energy. She's waking up refreshed. She wants to go into the garden in the morning. You know, she's telling me all these stories when yeah. she's coming in for her follow-up appointments, by the way. So um, she's able to garden. She's able to go on a walk. She's able to take her, her dog on a walk. And she's able to spend the time with her husband, you know, in, in, with the, uh, and give him the attention, I think, that she's wanted to give him for such a long time. So their relationship is also really blossoming. And it's, it's interesting because you think they've been married, you know, for, for such a long time, for 30, 40 years, whatever it was. But it's like their relationship has just been transformed again. You know, and so really, really an amazing story and somebody I was, I was very, very happy to, to, that we could help out. I mean, it's hard to believe that they, they, they really don't even know they have it, that a good majority of people. Yeah. Is that right? That's absolutely right, Randy. So, you know, it's, it's interesting because people believe that they need to feel tired or they believe that they need to snore in order to, to be diagnosed with something or to have a problem. But then they go in for these sleep studies, okay? They're not tired, they don't snore, and then they find out that they stop breathing 30 times an hour, okay? Making them severe, having severe sleep apnea. By the way, they, 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 then they start seeing the effects of that later on in their life, right? So you stop breathing 30 times an hour, at some point it's gonna catch up to you. Your body's gonna really feel that impact, right? So your, your body's in stress throughout the night, you're not getting the oxygen, your cells aren't getting the oxygen that they need. You start getting high blood pressure, you start having acid reflux, you start having difficulty losing weight, okay? It can lead to so many things. Increase your chance of stroke, Randy, by almost 70%. So you don't okay? sleep, you're stressed, your body's stressed. Absolutely. So like these stress hormones. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. look, everybody knows if you, it, what it feels like to not sleep. Yeah. You're exhausted the next day, Yeah. right? Yeah, you're yeah. E even kind of moody, yeah. right? You're, you're overeating foods you normally wouldn't have. Absolutely. Is this the kind of thing that these people with sleep apnea are dealing with? Yeah, people feel lousy when they don't sleep, and, and some of them don't realize that that's not normal because they, they've been dealing with this for their entire life. So it's not actually until they get the treatment that they realize, oh my gosh, th this is who I am as a person, this is what I'm <laughs> supposed to feel like, Good. this is how I'm supposed to live my life. You know, they can go to work and function normally, they can be happy and play with their kids, you know, or, or they can go on walks with their spouse, you know, and so it's really a transformation uh, not only physically, Randy, but, but mentally as well. You know, their outlook on life is different. They're more positive. You know, sleep apnea and depression also have a huge correlation. You know, if you're not getting the quality of sleep, and I'm going to really emphasize this because All right. it's really quality over quantity, right? You're not getting the quality of sleep that you need. You're going to feel it mentally, physically. Your body's going to be exhausted. Your mind's going to be tired. You know, you start thinking about why am I not getting uh, the output at work or, or why am I not getting the promotions that I feel like I should? I've been at the same job for so many years. Why am I not, um, you know, uh, having the results in school or in college that I should be having? I've been studying my tail off, right? Yeah. But it's really, it's maybe your mind's not in it. Maybe you're not able to focus and concentrate. And that's what these people Because if you don't sleep, you can't concentrate. Yeah, if you don't sleep, if you're not breathing, if you're constantly coming out of this deep sleep throughout the night, then you can't focus. So you're in a unique position. So you fit people with these appliances yeah. that open up their airway when they sleep, yeah. and then you see them change as a person. Yeah, yeah, that, really? that's absolutely right. It's it's as simple as that. Um, it's it's really a, a custom made mouthpiece, okay, that they can comfortably wear in their mouth when they sleep. Just fits right over their teeth. Some people think that, or or they predict, is it going to be obtrusive? Am I going to be able to talk? And and the the answer is absolutely. You can open and close your mouth. You can talk when you wear the device. You can drink water while it's in your mouth. You can uh, sleep in any position, travel very easily with it. This isn't orthodontics. We're not moving teeth and we're not permanently changing your look or your jaw or anything like that. It's just a temporary repositioning of the jaw and the tongue when you're sleeping, just a few millimeters, very comfortable, Okay. just enough so that your airway opens and you can breathe. So these people, they're breathing just fine throughout the day. Walking around, they breathe, yeah. then they lay down. So yeah. what's happening? They lay down and they're what? Their jaw yeah. drops back? 
Well, Randy, it's it's just like we all we all think, right? It's your when you sleep, what happens? Your whole body relaxes, right? So with the rest of your body, right? So does your upper airway. So all the tissues, the, the tongue being the, the largest muscle in the mouth, the the jaw, everything relaxes. By the way, the tongue is attached to your lower jaw. So when your lower jaw relaxes when you sleep, that tongue falls back into your throat. It blocks the back of the throat. So physically, that's why we call it obstructive sleep apnea. It's obstructive. Physically, air cannot pass through that space, and you can't get air into your body. So they're, they're just exhausted. When you don't get air, you don't get oxygen. And when you don't get oxygen, you're exhausted throughout the day. So physically, what we're doing is actually similar to what you might think of when we do CPR, right? We actually reposition the, the jaw very slightly, and that opens up the airway. Why? Because when the tongue's attached to your lower jaw, it brings the tongue forward. It allows the patients to breathe by opening up the airway, okay? So it's a, it's a very Correct. unique and very simple approach. And uh, now you wear one. Correct, yeah. yeah. Is that right? I asked well. you in the green, green yeah, room. Yeah. And you were surprised. The, uh, now, CPAP, I misspoke earlier, and I said 60%. I guess the study is around 50% of the people can't wear CPAP. Now, CPAP works. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Uh, but I guess if half the people can't wear it, it doesn't work. You tried it, you said. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, Randy, you were already wearing an appliance that yeah. worked. Correct. So why correct. the CPAP? Why did you do it? Well, you know, I wanted to see what my patients experience, right? Because... A majority of my patients uh, that come in have been referred by their physicians and have tried CPAP. Um, and I wanted to see what their experience was like, right? So I actually went ahead, paid for one, and ordered a CPAP myself, even though I didn't need it. Okay. okay but I wanted to see what their experience was like. Um, I, I, I tried it on, and, and honestly, I, you know, I, I, I was comfortable with it, but um, it, it was really... Is it true you have to sleep on your back? Yeah, absolutely. Oh my goodness. You know, it's very difficult when you have a mask mask on your face and you have hoses and everything that need to be positioned a certain way. So you you didn't actually like it. I mean, you tolerated it, but you didn't like it. I was able Elaborate to tolerate it, Randy, because I knew I was only using it for a short period of time just to try out. But let me tell you, my wife couldn't stand the noise. It, you know, every now and then the air would leak from the mask and, and it, it would actually go on her. Now, this is actually a, a, a really high power of air, okay? So it's not, you might, it's not something that you'd think from like a nasal cannula or something like that. I mean, this is a high force of air going through this mask into your mouth or your nose. And so when it leaks, it makes a lot of noise, okay? So she was feeling it. The hose that comes off the mask and attaches to the machine is getting tangled around our bed or around her, and so that was she was having trouble with that. And then the biggest thing I didn't like, Randy, was that once I put that mask on, I couldn't talk. Okay, so if she <laughs> asked me a question, I couldn't answer, and I was kind of stuck. I was like, you just basically you decide that at this point on, I'm done, lights off, we're not going to be okay. talking anymore okay. for the rest of the night. So, so that was the, the hardest thing I had to deal with, and then the maintenance of it, right? So it's. It you was to clean it. The, the like clean, yeah, absolutely. You know, the 15, 20 minutes or more that it requires every morning to clean and maintain it. All the parts, you know, you have the mass, the tubes, the filters, the humidifier tank, traveling with it, the costs associated with all that stuff. So it was really a convenience factor for me. I just found the oral devices so much simpler. I just put a mouthpiece in my mouth. I go to bed. You just brush it the next morning to clean it. There's a solution to, to, to disinfect it. You really have, don't have to worry about anything else. It's very simple for me. Now, you are a diplomat of the Sleep Society. Correct. What is it? It's the American Board of Dental Sleep Medicine. So it's actually a sister company of the American Academy of Sleep Physicians. So all the, all the physicians that are, uh, are board certified in sleep and we're the sister company to them. Now you teach other doctors, other dentists on how to do this. Yeah, actually, uh, Randy, as a matter of fact, after, after our talk today, I'm actually gonna be going to, to lecture um, for two days to a group of doctors and nurses um, on sleep medicine. Two days, like two full days. Yeah, eight hours a day. We're gonna so be you're going to lecture for 16 hours. Yeah, yeah. Is there that much to this? <laughs> you know, I say that respectfully, but I mean, <laughs> is there really that much to it? I mean, so obviously the device doesn't do all the work. Correct. You know, Randy, it, it, and we're not even, we're just skimming the topic. When I say, you know, I'm, you're asking me if there's more to it than just the 16 hours I'm lecturing. You know, it took me two, two and a half years to gain my board certification in dental sleep medicine. So this is a very in-depth topic. There's a lot to it. Um, there's a lot of science and medicine behind it, but there's also a lot of other things, right? Like, you know, billing your, your insurance company and making sure that patients are, are receiving the care that they need, um, making sure that we are adjusting these devices the right way. Are we choosing the right device for, for the patient? Because there's over 140 FDA approved devices out there, oral devices for them to wear. Now you brought two, are these your two favorite? Yeah, absolutely. Well, these are two, uh, I, I would say two of the best quality of devices that are out there in the market. Uh, two, of, uh, 
Yes, two of my favorites. Okay, one smaller than the other. Yeah, absolutely. That well, looks like the good one. <laughs> yeah, no, well, you know, they're, they're both equally effective. They both do a great job. They have their pros and cons. Let me see this. Let me see how small these yeah, are. Yeah, absolutely. So this is Look nice. at this. I, I guess you could see this. It's, I mean, this is really small. Yeah. Now, well, this seems comfortable. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. And insurance covers it. Absolutely. Medicare covers it. Mm -hmm. Now, Randy, the unique thing is that there are so many different devices out there in the market, okay? Over 140 FDA-approved oral devices. They all have their own strengths. Different materials, different sizes, different um, uh, comfort levels, right? And for different purposes. So I like to say that we should be able to find a device that suits almost anyone's need, right? And so that's what I love about these devices. There's so much to choose from. It's not like a one size fits all, okay? So patient may be receiving orthodontic care, for example, mm -hmm. right? Going through braces. Well, guess what? We can make a device for them. And in as extreme of a case as an elderly patient, I've treated many who have dentures, a full set of dentures, upper they and lower, it. and they when we can make an oral device, right? So there's so many options here that it's ridiculous. And for many people, you say it's life-changing. Just getting them back to sleep and yeah. no more snoring. Yeah, absolutely. Randy, can you imagine if somebody's life depended on this? And, and when I say life, I also mean livelihood. You know, I had a patient, Jimmy, okay, about 40, 45 years old, male, um, who came in because he had no other options, okay? He's a, he's a truck driver, so his livelihood literally depended on him receiving benefit for his sleep apnea. He was, okay. he was stopping breathing over 50 times an hour, so he had severe sleep apnea, okay? His oxygen levels are dropping below 70% during the night, okay? So very, very dangerous. By the way, when I'm in surgery, okay, and I'm at the surgery center, if my patient's oxygen level drops below 93, 94%, the anesthesiologist will step in and stop the procedure okay. and make sure that the patient's breathing, okay? So that's how serious it is. Well, Jimmy comes in, um, and he had tried the CPAP machine, absolutely could not tolerate it. And him being on the road all the time, he also couldn't always take it with him, so that was another big challenge. Um, but he needed something that really worked for him. His job, believe it or not, put a restriction and put him on leave and said, unless your sleep apnea is treated, you can't come back to work, okay? So his doctors were monitoring his so care So he was well. sleeping while he was driving. He was falling yeah, asleep. Yeah, absolutely, okay. yeah. He was, he was very tired, and, and their risk was, uh, their, their fear was, was that you know he, they didn't want him to get into a car accident, right, yeah. and, and and die potentially? So um, he gets referred into my office. He comes in, um, and he, he's amazed. He had never heard of this treatment before. We explain him how this worked and and what it involved, and in one afternoon his life changed. Once he started using the oral device, he had a lot more energy. So immediately when he comes in to his follow-up appointments, Randy. By the way, we have two or three follow-up appointments where we make sure that these devices are working. Because you may have to adjust them? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. We start them up very comfortably and we want to make sure they're comfortable through the whole process. And we want to adjust them to the optimal position. So this is not about moving your jaw all the way forward or making you look you know, like a monkey or like Jay Leno or anything like that. Okay. Uh, it's, it's really about just a minimal adjustment to make it comfortable but effective, right? So um, he comes in for his follow-up appointments and immediately he tells me how he's sleeping better, his snoring is a lot less, so his, his wife is, is telling him that, you know, she can even sleep through the night now, by the way, right? So even though he may be waking up, you know, 50 times a night, so is she, right? All right. So she's sleeping better, um, but uh, he's getting more energy because he's sleeping better, okay? Um, he immediately notices re these results where he's not snoring as much and um, uh, he's not as fatigued is during the day. He's back to work? He's back to work. Well, we got him adjusted. We did a follow-up sleep study, okay, yeah, where yeah. we we're testing to see to make sure that this device is actually working, it's effective, his oxygen levels are up. He went from 50 times an hour to just seven, okay? okay. So now- Waking up, we're talking about- Waking up, yeah, he was waking up 50 times an hour. Hard to believe people hour. would wake up 50 times an Can hour. Can you imagine, right? It's, it's, it's really, really amazing. I mean, at, at how much this can really affect their, their quality of life. Um, but, you know, now, it, to uh, on another level, his his blood pressure is down, right? He's now even considering talking to his doctor about getting off of his blood pressure medications. So it's really a, a comprehensive and all around turnaround in his life. He has more energy. He's a different person. He's a lot happier now. He can concentrate and focus when he's driving his truck, and he's not sleepy. So his doctor allowed him to go back to work. Okay, so he's back to work. Another really interesting thing about uh, about this specifically is that a lot of these jobs now require that. Um, these devices are effectively treating their patients with, you know, for their sleep apnea. And so we can even track and monitor the, uh, that their patients are using this and submit that data to the insurance companies if they require it, to the doctors, okay. that kind of thing. So it's, it's really, um, these devices have evolved a, a lot. You know, they were actually 
they came out in the early 80s, almost the same time the CPAP mask did. And they've, they've been around for a long time now. So these are a proven treatment option, one of the first line treatment options for sleep apnea and chronic snoring. So the loud, talking about the snores for just a moment. So people yeah. with the really loud snores, <clears throat> sure. right? I was on a school trip with one of my kids and the guy had to sleep, you know, had to sleep up top of the deck yeah. of the ship. So my, my question is, um, how well does it work for just the snore crowd? Yeah. And does every loud snorer have a little bit of apnea? Sure. You know, I, I had a, a patient who came in, Elaine, in her mid-30s, and she did not have sleep apnea. She had a sleep study done, no apnea, but she said she snored like a freight train, okay? okay. She was so embarrassed. She kept holding and postponing trips with her girlfriends because she couldn't sleep in the same room with them. She was so embarrassed. Well, she had a trip coming up in about a month and a half, and she comes in and tells me, if they're, asks me if there's anything that we can do for her. So we were able to make her a, a very small oral device um, that was clear, that she loved, that nobody could tell she was wearing, and it completely got rid of her snoring. So even before she went on her trip, she told me, Dr. Shaw, you know, my boyfriend said I'm not snoring anymore, and I'm so excited to go on this trip. And of course, you know, I, I never hear from these patients again yeah, yeah, yeah. because because their problem solved. It's like, you know, they're happy, and so they're off and away and living their life. So I was very, very pleased so, to have. But it is mostly men. Um, you know, we have, it, it is mostly men. It affects more men than it does so, women. So if somebody's watching this and their partner is a loud snorer, they yeah. need to drag them in and see. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and you know, it's rich. Really? Majority of our patients, I would say, were dragged in by their spouse. Oh, is that right? Yeah, because it's really, you know, when you're the one snoring or you're the one not breathing at night, you don't even know that you're doing it, right? It's not like you're waking up or waking yourself up. It's your spouse. It's your wife or your husband looking at you saying, gosh, I'm scared. He's not breathing. Or gosh, he's making so much noise, I can't sleep next to him. And it's affecting the relationship. So you get referrals every day from medical doctors? Absolutely. Every day yeah. in your office? Absolutely. And so you know, the word's on the street then <laughs> that this is effective? Yes, that's absolutely true. Yeah. Okay. And you know, it's, it's also that how well we screen and we determine who's a good candidate for this treatment. Because let me tell you, this isn't for everybody, okay? So we're, I'm very, very selective at who I feel is a good candidate for this treatment. That's what our initial exam, our one hour where we first meet the patient is all about. Um, we do a comprehensive exam. I review their sleep study with them if they have one. Um, and I want to make sure that this is, you know, what are your chances of success? That we're, this is actually going to work so for you. So are the appliances getting smaller and smaller? Because, I, you know, I've had people on the show talking about this years ago, and the appliances seem very big. Yeah. These yeah. seem very small. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And they're, they're so great now that they're even 3D printed. So we can, we can make a device. That little one right there is 3D printed. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, where we can Let's actually scan in models of your teeth, okay, and, and uh, a printer will 3D print the device um, where it's, this is the lightest and thinnest device out in the market We're short today. on time, but your mother what, had sleep apnea. Yeah. And you took care of it? Did yeah, that's her? absolutely right. You know, and, and the funny thing is, is her doctor did not feel it was necessary to test her for sleep apnea. It, it was a very difficult time in, our, in my family's life because in my, it, my mom was, had just had a heart attack. And so it was actually in a meeting with her cardiologist where I really pressed for a sleep study. And he absolutely didn't feel like it was necessary because if you look at my mom, she's not the typical sleep apnea patient. She's very, very petite. She walks miles every day as exercise with, with, my, with my father. Um, and she's, she's vegetarian, you know, she's very good lifestyle. And so her cardiologist did not feel like she was gonna have sleep apnea. So her cardiologist finally agreed to give her a sleep study. Guess what, she had severe sleep apnea. She stopped breathing 33 times an hour. Her oxygen levels drop into the low 80s, okay? So I was very scared and immediately I wanted to make sure that she was treated, okay? So now, me being the son and me knowing about this, you know, I wanted to make sure she got the best treatment. Yeah. And so we got her a CPAP machine, that's what her doctor recommended first, so we went ahead with that. And she just could not tolerate it. She felt so claustrophobic with that mask. She could not sleep with okay. it. And here I am and my, fa and my father, and we're really pushing her to try it night after night. And you know, she, she called me one day and she was just crying on the phone. She did not want to use it. She couldn't use it anymore. And she was just fed up. And she said, why don't you just give me the mouthpiece that you give to all of your patients, yeah, right? Yeah. So we made her a custom oral device. Guess what? It completely got rid of her apnea. She went from 33 times an hour to only one event every hour where she woke up. Okay, so completely got rid of her apnea. I got a call from her cardiologist the day after her sleep study, yeah. and he was chuckling on the phone, like I should have believed you, you know, and, and I'm sorry, you know. But he was a very nice guy. But he worked out great for her. She's able to tolerate it. 
And the another big thing is another side effect, positive side effect impact that it had on her was that she grinds like anything, okay? She grinds so heavily, bruxing is what we call mm -hmm. it as dentists, where she has worn through almost all of her teeth So now, this stopped okay? that? So it completely stopped that as well. So it's really knocking out two birds with and one stone. her stop. energy level? I mean, you know, because these stories that you're telling where they're, you know, yeah. they have more energy, more focus. Yeah. It absolutely changed happened. her life, absolutely. She's sleeping better, she's not snoring anymore. My father said that my mom's a different person now, okay? She has a lot more energy, she's a lot more lively. She has a more positive outlook on life, okay? So it, it completely changed her life. Now, medical doctors will watch this show, and you work with the medical doctors, and I guess like with your mother, you don't go out of your way to contradict their advice. Absolutely, Okay. Yeah. You know, I think one of the biggest advantages and focuses of my practice is that I want to work with our medical community, right? And we do, very, very integrated with them. Um, the fact that we are focused on this treatment and nothing else, I don't do any general dentistry, no drilling and fillings. When you come to my office, you won't hear any noises, right? Um, but that gives me a chance to spend the time and care that I feel like we need to, to make sure that our patients are treated successfully. That allows me to make sure the devices are adjusted successfully that we can communicate with these doctors and make sure that they receive information on the care while it's going on and after it's completed. And that once the device are you know, successfully adjusted, that we do a follow-up sleep study. We make sure that it's actually effective so patients are breathing better, their oxygen levels are better. You know, I don't want this to be a guessing game. This isn't about just throwing a piece of plastic into somebody's mouth. Really, it's about making a okay. custom-made device that can be very, very effective. We are out of time, but sure. it, as mentioned, Medicare covers this, uh, medical insurance covers this. Do you need a referral from your primary care physician to see you? Sure, you know, I prefer they do, but it's not necessary. A lot of times we can communicate with the doctors so directly. So they can call you first? Absolutely, they can, yeah. Okay, good. I, well, I wanna thank you for coming to the show. Great information. Okay. If, uh, if somebody wants to know more, they could go to your website, make an appointment, and you have a couple of options.